What's going on guys, it's Adonis. Today, iPhone 6S Plus review, let's get started. The S in the iPhone 3GS stood for speed, and so does this one. With the A9 chip clocked at 1.8 gigahertz and two gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM, this iPhone is a powerhouse, making daily use extremely snappy and lagless. Even with a ton of apps open, it benchmark tests off the charts. We're talking over 2,500 in a single core score and over 4,400 in a multi-core score. This phone is literally the AMG version of the iPhone 6 from last year. And with the extra performance, you can finally run third-party keyboards without them crashing. They run as if they were built into the phone. 3D Touch isn't supported yet for them, but you can still download them at your heart's content. When 3D Touch was introduced, I didn't know if it was going to be a killer feature or a gimmick. I can now say with confidence though that 3D Touch is how everyone should experience iOS. The pressure-sensitive display allows you to shortcut your way through the interface and get to important things quickly and elegantly. When activated, you receive a satisfying vibration from the Taptic engine and it's like nothing you've ever experienced before on a phone. Soon you'll find yourself force pressing everything to see what it takes you to or allows you to do. And with third-party apps adopting the tech like Instagram, 3D Touch turns old applications into a new enjoyable experience. Since 2007, iPhone has been the benchmark for mobile phone cameras. Maybe not always having the latest tech or features, but it always produced some amazing photographs. Let's get this out of the way. Live photos is cool, but it's still baking in the oven in my opinion. The big features of this camera are the 4K video and the new megapixel count in both cameras. First, video. Some of the settings like 4K and 1080 at 120 frames a second are not set by default and you have to manually set these features up. I do wish the iPhone offered a manual mode for people who want more control of the camera, like the LG G4 and the Samsung Galaxy series. But with that said, what you get out of the stock settings are pretty incredible. 4K is shot at 50 megabits a second and give you amazing color, dynamic range, and without the over sharpening of the other smartphone cameras. And yes, I'm talking about you, Samsung. Optical image stabilization comes in video this time, but with a downside. In 4K, it is stable, just not as stable as 1080p at 60 frames a second. And I think it has to do with how much of the sensor is being read. The FaceTime camera's five megapixel sensor is a massive upgrade from the Motorola Razr flip phone like 1.2 megapixel shooter it replaces. And with the True Tone flash built into the display, selfies become much better in almost every lighting condition. I did multiple tests and every time the photos shot with the flash turned on were better. Now for all the pixel peepers out there, the 6S Plus does show more detail, better color, and dynamic range than the 6 Plus it replaces. However, when zoomed in, the differences aren't as drastic. You still get a little more detail, better color, but it's not a night and day difference. So my final verdict is the 6S Plus is a fantastic device. I came from a 6 Plus and immediately noticed the RAM difference, the performance difference, the camera difference, and 3D Touch is by far the way you need to interact with iOS, period. So if you're on anything 
5S or older, it is a definite upgrade. If you're on a 6 or a 6 Plus, I would say stop into a store, check it out for yourself, and see if you were willing to upgrade early. Other than that, guys, let me know down below what you guys think. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you guys have any suggestions for new videos, let me know in the comment section below. Give the video a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Till next time, guys. See you later.